So we'll get things started. Again, I want to thank everybody for joining part two of our three-part webinar series for disability insurance underwriting uh, tips and tricks. Uh, my name is Anthony Butler. I am the individual disability specialist here at um, Art Jetter and Company. We have Brock Falconer on the line, who is the Western Region DI Manager with Illinois Mutual. And Brock will be going over today some medical issues and underwriting uh, tips and tricks um, as far as DI is concerned. So, Brock, you want to go ahead and take it away? Absolutely, Tony. Appreciate it. And thank you guys for your attendance today. Uh, we'll quickly um, and uh, very methodically as well go through kind of some medical issues that we find within the disability insurance market space and how to potentially uh, kind of attack these case opportunities as, as we all know. Uh, we're less healthy than we think we are, and that's true for us as much as our clients, I believe. Uh, and we'll talk about ways in which to potentially, again, thwart some of the issues up front and really find a way to work through underwriting. Just note that I'm going to focus specifically today on the disability insurance industry overall and not necessarily just Illinois Mutual because you really do not find a ton of difference uh, between one disability insurance care and another as far as medical issues and uh, medical underwriting are concerned. So thank you again. Uh, ultimately, we need to first start uh, in thinking about selling disability insurance for really the three best ways to sell DI. Uh, again, it seems redundant, but I could not be more um, absolutely adamant about the importance that the three ways to sell DI are field underwriting, underwriting in the field, and field underwriting. Again, we can't be afraid to have the talk. Um, admittedly, it's a hurdle. You know, whether this is someone that we've known for a long time or maybe even just a new prospect or maybe someone that you've sold one line with, but again, don't have a ton of uh, connective tissue yet, uh, just don't be afraid to get over that hurdle. And why I say this is because we want to create clients instead of customers. To me, a customer is someone that purchases something from you. A client is someone that you build trust and rapport with. And ultimately, again, so much connective tissue that they're so less likely to go down the street or to pick up that call from their PNC agent that now wants to talk about risk protection or, you know, work with that life insurance professional um, that maybe doesn't do anything other than ultimately uh, just sell them something across the kitchen counter. Um, you know, when we get over the hurdle of, number one, someone's financial status, no one off the street's going to want to tell you how much money they make. We dealt with that last uh, presentation. And then also uh, someone's medical history. You know, what's gone on in the past five to 10 years? What doctors have you seen? What medications are you taking? If you get to that point and get over those two major hurdles, you're going to, again, have much more of an opportunity uh, to have a client uh, versus just a purchasing customer. Um, let's face it, uh, again, you're going to find out about everything from Aunt Susie's cancer uh, to Uncle Joe's bad foot. So many things that you'll learn about from someone, um, even within a couple minutes of meeting someone, sometimes even to the point of it being highly awkward. But again, for them personally to get into the finances and get into their medical history, that person, again, is much less likely to be shopping out. Uh, against you, um, assuming that you're doing everything you can to give them holistic uh, protection and opportunities, which I know you would. Um, again, up front, we want to be able to earmark conditions for concern, some medical issues, some medications attached to medical issues. Let's find this stuff up, up front because we know um, being as professional as we are in this industry and in the risk protection in any proprietary fields we're in, this stuff will be found one way or another. And that's not often something understood by the general public. The lost art of field underwriting, right? We have minds in the field. Uh, whether we're applying for something on a simplified or non-med basis or whether it's fully underwritten, let's make our clients aware of the fact that there's going to be an MIB check, right? There's a medical insurance board that has a record of all applications that are declined, heavily rated, or, or had any uh, essentially uh, red checks uh, in the past. So this stuff cannot be hidden, right? We're not going to be able to jump from one bad offer from one carrier and hope for something great from the next. Uh, it's going to be very congruent, at least with the information that would be gathered by all carriers. Carriers will also do a script check. Let's let our clients know that any medications taken uh, should be divulged now 
because the carrier is going to find out about it via, again, a script check service. So really nowhere to hide. Uh, and instead of that being a negative thing, let's get this stuff out up front. Uh, carriers will often and really uh, almost every single time do an MVR or motor vehicle report. Right, A client, whether you're applying for life insurance or disability or long-term care, if they've gotten five speeding tickets in the past week, chances are there might be some life habit adjustments that may need to take place before that client really is able to get the best rates or maybe even apply for the coverage overall. Uh, we're really looking to pre-qualify clients, not on a guarantee issue basis whatsoever. But again, by letting the clients know that this stuff needs to come up up front and working with a professional team like Art Jetter and company, um, you can really get this preemptive field underwriting information to a professional like Tony that can really shop the disability insurance carrier field to make sure that you are predetermining where these mines lie, predetermining what kind of uh, conceptual offer to expect should the client apply with this carrier versus another carrier. And he will be working with and his team will be working with the underwriters of carriers like Illinois Mutual to, again, pre-qualify what kind of offer we would get based on the medical history that we find out up front. Think about the value add and the time savings in getting this done, again, up front by essentially pre-qualifying what carrier makes the most sense, not only based on how much a client makes, what they do for a living, and what, what their income is and what their needs are, but also essentially how a carrier would look at their medical issues. As I stated from the start, there's not a huge variance in what one carrier in the disability insurance space would do versus another medically, but there will be small idiosyncratic differences. And again, professional teams like Art Jenner and Associations and Associates and Tony are going to be able to, again, establish uh, a connection between what the client is specifically seen as the most important value in an income protection plan and what a carrier would specifically do for that client and make sure that you can line that up as best as possible. Again, this stuff will be found out as far as the medical issues, whether it's stated on the application or not. But just note that you really want to make sure that this stuff is known up front so that not only are you going the right direction, but ultimately you're able to set good expectations as well as a, a, a good revolving door of honesty, right? If you think about carrier underwriters, um, and we've probably all heard kind of some of the jokes, right? Um, you know, the, these are folks that are going to be uh, very kind of streamlined in their way of looking at things. They have essentially what they oftentimes call like a DI Bible, uh, which is kind of their carriers and or their reinsurers uh, view on certain medical issues, uh, when the diagnosis was, so on and so forth. A lot of ratios and parameters that they focus on. But keep in mind, one of the worst things you can do is start um, by essentially creating a, a level of mistrust. And what I mean by that is there's going to be between eight and probably 20 to 30 medical yes or no questions, and then some spaces for you to give more detail um, regarding medical issues on an application. If someone were, let's say, to answer no in regarding you know headaches and or um, anything in that regard in the past, and then the carrier finds out that they take a medication for migraines, well, now we've already established a level of mistrust. It really hasn't been a revolving door of honesty. And we've re really created at that point um, kind of a, a red flag in the carrier's eyes that, uh, again, should not be 100% reflective on kind of what kind of offer the client gets. But let's think of us teetering on a cliff. Uh, we fall off and get a, a very conservative offer that the carrier feels better about. We stay on the cliff and we kind of get some concessions made for us and maybe the carrier throws us a bone. You know, which which way do you think things are going to go if, again, we start kind of down the wrong path and we create that uh, level of, of unknown or mistrust uh, in the carrier and or underwriter's eyes? That's why it's so important, again, to set the expectations up front, not only with the client, by being able to pre-qualify what we would expect as far as a medical offer, but really we would want to set the expectations of the carrier as well. Here's a list of things that have gone on in the past. We're being very open and honest with what's happening. Um, you know, what can you do for us here? Uh, let's try to be as aggressive as possible in A, B, and C, right? Um, we also need to just keep in mind that the, the client sometimes would need to be put in the carrier's shoes. 
you know, we've all seen the movies, The Rainmaker, the list can go on where, you know, again, we kind of mistrust the insurance carriers. And let's face it, I work for one myself, and I understand we ultimately are a casino, admittedly, right? The house is always going to win. But really, we can marry uh, a win for everyone involved if we, again, keep in perspective that the carrier's biggest concern is placing good business and absolutely wanting to do what's right for the client, but not a detriment to the carrier, right? And really, we think of that as being a carrier perspective, but let's keep it as a perspective of all of us as well. Because I'm pretty sure when you have an insurance policy with the carrier, you want that carrier to stay strong financially. You want them to have good risk on the books. And you don't want them to have any kind of hurdles to go through in the future because you want that policy to be represented 10 years from now, 5 years from now, 15 years from now by just as strong of a carrier as it was represented from today. Uh, and again, that's why I think putting the client in the carrier's shoes can be important because this is ultimately a partnership between all involved. Let's face it. And we're really finding an answer to a problem, you know, and a solution to a risk and hopefully working with a carrier um, that we're going to be able to, again, keep a strong relationship with and that carrier staying strong moving forward to really have your back uh, within that policy as well. When medical issues do arise and we do pre-qualify the fact that there are some medical issues, I alluded to the fact that Art Jetter and company, as well as Tony, are going to be fantastic resources to find out where to go from there. Uh, and here's a few ideas. So first off, um, let, let's face the fact that DI is a fantastic door opener, okay? Um, ultimately, I'm sure your proprietary products require a premium payment or assets to be held uh, to be able to, to really work on um, that continued proprietary market business that you're doing. Um, in doing anything on the income protection realm, you're creating sticky business. You're uh, separating yourself from your competition. And ultimately, there's nothing wrong, in my opinion anyways, of saying that you are the jack of all trades and master of a few. You have proprietary markets that you're the absolute master of, and you partner with other individuals that, again, are going to be the master in their specific realm. Myself included being only focused on disability insurance or morbidity, whereas other people are more focused on mortality. Uh, and again, someone like Jetter and company are going to be focused uh, on specific markets that they have individuals like Tony that really, again, become the master in each one of those. But let's face it, there's going to be some medical issues and we need to really see where things are going to lead uh, from an early point on. Keep in mind, again, as I talked about, there's going to be some reactive motivators um, that really decide whether a carrier is going to you know, do um, a more aggressive offer uh, for a client or maybe be a little bit more conservative. And knowing the conditions up front are very helpful. Um, the conditions in medications are very important. The parameters that we really want to focus on is what is the said condition? When was it diagnosed? How is it currently being treated? and or how was it being treated in the past. Um, that's a key component when we think about cancer. Uh, we want to know what the stage was when it was found, how it was treated in the past, how it's currently being treated, as well as kind of what the current prognosis is. Is the client considered cancer-free? Um, how long has the cancer been dormant? So on and so forth. Note with any kind of body parts, right, shoulder, knees, ankles, feet, arms, whatever it may be, uh, the carrier in lieu of ultimately affecting the entire policy will add in exclusions. So essentially, you had a shoulder surgery two years ago. Okay, we'll cover you. Um, essentially, approved is applied for, but we're going to exclude that shoulder. I personally have had two knee surgeries. Yay for me. Um, both my knees would be excluded uh, from uh, income protection. And actually, currently, only one is uh, because I purchased the policy before the second surgery. So I guess really yay for me. Um, you know, there's there's health versus risk, right? Um, so ultimately, a body part, we're going to exclude that body part as a carrier. Uh, and again, this is across the board because of the fact there's a pre-existing condition with that body part. We don't want to heavily rate or decline the policy because of that issue. We're going to cover all the other thousands of ways that you are at risk for suffering and disabling event, but we're going to exclude that specific body part. Um, you know, health concerns as far as medical conditions themselves can be a little bit tougher, uh, especially since conditions like, say, um, diabetes um, or, um, you know, ALS, things like that. So it can be a little bit more difficult. 
um, because there's um, ultimately ways that you would suffer a disabling event that aren't directly maybe related uh, to a condition um, that you're actually diagnosed with. For instance, diabetes, a lot of folks uh, miss time from work uh, because of uh, issues with their limbs and you know other conditions that diabetes causes, but it's not necessarily uh, a specific uh, cause by diabetes. So therefore, that could be a tougher one to underwrite at times. But again, working with professionals that know what they're doing, working with the underwriters to pre-qual what we could do for those folks um, is gonna be your best bet in making sure you get from A to Z as quick as humanly possible. A very un unknown and unfocused on medical issue that is one of the leading causes of disability insurance claim, uh, they call it the silent disabler, um, which kind of sounds like a, a cool Spider-Man villain, um, is uh, mental nervous disorders, anxiety, depression, work stress. Um, depending on which carrier, it's anywhere between 10 and 15% of their overall claims. So believe it or not, that's a huge claim. Uh, we think about some of the causes of that, um, bad divorce, death in the family, um, those things that, again, are going to be uh, very you know, grief-stricken, anxiety and depression-stricken, um, but again, usually isn't going to be a permanent disabling situation, more an expanse of time. Um, but again, let's think about the fact even a short period of time without a paycheck could be detrimental, right? Um, so where do we kind of see some of this stuff fall, uh, whether it be mental nervous um, and the like? So the carrier, uh, as I said, for body parts can do an exclusion. We're going to exclude that knee, exclude that shoulder, exclude uh, the forearms because of uh, previous carpal tunnel issues. Um, however, with the uh, medical issue side, um, you're going to see some adjustments like a short knee in the benefit period. So maybe you applied with a benefit period to age 67. We're going to shorten it to five or two years max. Maybe you wanted to apply with a 30-day elimination period, right? 30-day deductible. Well, we're going to adjust that and make it a minimum 90-day deductible because we feel like that's going to protect our risk enough because of uh, actual medical conditions that invest now. Um, so some ways to push back when we get some of these offers is to potentially lower the benefit amount if the client could get by with, you know, 2500 a month versus 5000 a month. Or again, maybe the client would be willing to look at a 180-day elimination period or deductible if they were to get a more aggressive overall offer. Um, you know, maybe we can look at getting the carrier to put in writing that they will relook at the, the client's medical history after a couple years of the policy being in force and not having any more medical issues and ultimately having better uh, doctor records uh, that show a, a long period of control. So there's definitely ways to push back. I won't get too detailed because it's going to be more of a case-for-case -case basis. But again, up front, going to have a great opportunity to pre-qualify people and partnering with people like Tony and his team. Uh, while the policy is in and we get essentially an adjusted offer because maybe the medical issues are more severe than we first indicated. Again, he will do everything in his power and his team will do everything in his power to push back in a way, again, that makes sense for all involved, including the carrier. As well as think about options for the future. Um, you know, even with these policies and the way they're adjusted, and maybe you do have to lower the benefit amount to get a more aggressive offer but we'll still look to add things like future purchase options and other ways um, that really we can build upon what was initially offered and available up front uh, for the future. As well as again, get an idea, even if the carrier won't put it in writing, get an idea of when maybe the client could re-explore an opportunity to purchase what would conceivably be a more aggressive policy. Ultimately, let's, let's face it, why we do what we do is because the realities are one out of four people are going to suffer a disabling event. And even if you have a current medical issue that you would love to buy a new policy for to cover, uh, a big one being the back. Well, if you have any previous uh, serious back issues or even remedial back issues, chances are purchasing a policy now is going to exclude that back. Seems completely counterproductive and really kills a lot of uh, opportunity to really place that sale, right? Well, the simple fact is well over half of all DI claims are illness related, not injury or accident related. So there's thousands of other ways that the client could potentially not be able to work that we need to ensure. Let's also think about the fact that the length of claims um, for the industry, disability claims are between two and three years. With Illinois Mutual, it's actually 366 days. 
But either way you look at it, uh, most claims are not permanent. So even a reduced benefit period of maybe two years uh, is still going to be a very comprehensive plan and one that covers the majority of DI claims. And I sure would like a 24-month check coming in uh, versus a zero-month check if my initial payroll wasn't there for me because I suffered a disabling event. Let's also quickly think about the fact that workers' comp is not going to cover anyone for illness as well as any accident or an injury that happens away from work. And disability insurance from the federal level is only going to cover you if your disability keeps you out from any job on the planet and or has potential to lead to death. So let's think about the realities of what we're doing here, the realities that even a heavily rated um, and or uh, reduced plan is still much more comprehensive than any other opportunity out there. And partnering with Jetter and Associates is going to get you from point A to point Z as soon as humanly possible. Uh, and ultimately, the third part of the series will really focus on how to sell uh, that rated policy and really where to take that adjusted offer uh, to the finish line versus having it show up as wastage. Really thank you guys for your time today and really hope you can join us here in a couple of weeks when again we focus on kind of where to go from here and, and what to do once you get an adjusted and or heavily rated offer. Thank you very much. Brock, thanks again. Um, for those of you guys that are on the call in your thinking about clients that um, you possibly will be talking to disability or talking about disability with, I uh, want you to keep in mind that this is not a situation where we want you to be an expert in underwriting. This is to kind of give you an, an overview of the underwriting process, how it goes as far as the health side goes. Um, we have, we meaning our Jetter and Company, we have what's called a DI proposal request form. That form is used for the agents to capture information from their clients. Um, I strongly suggest that you use that form if you have a potential client. Um, I can help you with filling that form out in regards to any health issues, things like that. That allows us to have our in-house underwriter take a look at things if there are medical issues so we can find the best possible carrier for your client. Again, if you have any questions at all, feel free to give me a call. The number is 800-228-0008. My extension is 1032. I want to thank you guys for taking time out this afternoon. Um, and we'll uh, talk to you here in a couple of weeks. Have a fantastic day and a great week.